What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at our benchmarks while our ultimate steam deck is plugged in to the mothership which includes a 2k monitor and a 6700 XT. Um, the very first numbers we're going to be looking at are our stock settings meaning we didn't do any real overclocks on it and we got some pretty good scores so we'll go over it real quick 8890 um, I don't know what legendary means, but our graphics card did 11803, CPU due to 3707, and all those numbers mean is if we plugged it into a 1440p monitor with 120 um, her uh, hertz, meaning 120 frames, uh, we, we could play Battle Battlefield 5 at a minimum of 115 frames. All right, so that's basically what those numbers mean. Um, after that, well. Um, I went ahead and started adjusting the TDP a little bit and we're kind of not even going to use these numbers but we'll go over it real fast um, to let you know kind of what was going on. So 20 watt TDP increase dropped the scores down. Um, we went from 115 frames to 110 and the CPU dropped to 3632 from a 3707. Um, didn't know what was going on. So I went ahead and increased the TDP again. And we still got a worse score from stock, 8847, um, still 110 frames in Battlefield 5, uh, which is a quite a bit drop from the 8890 that we got on stock settings. So I was like, okay, we got to do multiple tests now. So we're not, we're going to go, our baseline is going to be this one right here, the stock 8890, 3707 on the CPU. After we did that, and messed with those TDPs. I went ahead and boosted it at 3.8 gigahertz, and I'll show you test one at that 3.8 gigahertz at 20 watt TDP. We got a worse score than stock. Then I repeated a test again, and then we got a better score than stock. We got 8971 at 3759 on the CPU, but ultimately still 115 frames in Battlefield at 1440p. Um, next, we went ahead and we boosted it up a little bit more. Test one at 3.9 gigahertz with a 20 watt TDP is a worse score, 8830. Then we retested it again and we got even a worse score, 8800. So, I, I like I said, maybe there's don't know what's really going on. I'm pretty sure there's background apps running without my attention. I made sure to have everything exact same, but it is what it is. After that, I went ahead and I increased the TDP um, from 20 to 3.24, uh, so 24. Um, and the gigahertz is still the same. Test number one, we got a 911. So that increase in TDP really freaking mattered. Um, best scores yet. And Real quick caveat, if you watched the previous video, um, you would know that my CPU, no matter what I did, I could not get it to boost further than a 3.85 on any title, any game, anything. I just could not get it to boost any higher. I think most of the time it was at 3.47, uh, 3.8. 3.847 it was it was weird it was it was weird and i couldn't get it to get instability whatsoever so what you're going to notice is that tdp is going to be like the main limiting thing um test number two we got a slightly less uh score on that one um and then we went to a four gigahertz uh 24 watt tdp pretty much the same score as the previous ones then i said you know what the hell i'm just gonna go 4.1 see what happens pretty much the same score again and i tested it again uh pretty much the same score again actually a little bit less um and then let's just push the tdp to what i feel like is the maximum tdp and when i say maximum i'm talking about i don't think anyone should be pushing past this point mainly because heat and if you saw the previous video, we have a heat sink attached to our IC chip now. And secondly, your power, your stock power brick cannot keep up with a 20, anything above a 26 watt TDP. And even at 26 watts, I have noticed the battery still drain while in charge. So 
I don't think it's a very safe to place to be. But clearly, if you went through, you see this testing, we did uh, quite a lot better. So our first test got our best, our, our pretty much our, our best score, 9133. And our second test, pretty much the same, 9100. And then the funny thing is, you'll see in this one, where, where is it? Where is it? 9111 at 3.9 gigahertz at 24 watt TDP is our best one at 24 and then oh well, I lost it sorry this one right here with a an increased 26 watt TDP sorry not that big of a difference um increasing your TDP by 2 did not make a huge difference we gained 22 on the score our CPU went from a 3953 at 24 watt TDP to a 3975 so really not any big gains whatsoever not the greatest gains whatsoever so ultimately I think what we can talk about with these overclocks on time spy is that right now the way smoke list is running until maybe someone else figures out or I figure out we cannot push the CPU past whatever the CPU is willing to allow for mine is three three point eight four seven and the main limiting factor at that point is your overall TDP issues though is 24 is clearly better than 20 watts but the 20 from 20 a 20 watt TDP on an unmodded steam deck is pushing it to the limit 24 watts and an unmodded steam deck is break city you're gonna break your steam deck I guarantee you're gonna break your steam deck a 24 watt TDP unmodded and I don't think a JSOX cooler could ever do anything to 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 handle 24 watt TDP I would suggest not doing that um, even the back plate, I don't think can handle a 24 watt TDP. I think the only ones that can handle that is active cooling on that one uh, on the IC chip. Uh, whether you modded it like I did with our Ultimate Steam Deck, where we have a heatsink attached to it, and that's why I wasn't afraid to do the 24 watt TDP. Or back when we had a JSOX back plate, we had the fan mod included, which really helped our temperatures with the JSOX backplate with a heat sink and a fan external fan and the fan mod we I would felt more than comfortable doing a 24 watt TDP and even the 26 watt TDP and I feel even more comfortable doing the 26 watt TDP because we are tied into our ultimate steam deck with that heat sink on our IC chip and we have that external fan blowing air into the steam deck so as of right now TDP is everything just like it was on a uh, handheld mode without the external GPU guys if you overclock your steam deck you need to work on active cooling you have to it is imperative do not do this stock I wouldn't just trust putting a JSOX backplate on and if you do do the JSOX backplate you got to do the thermal pad mod and a JSOX cooler will not help you with these overclocks because you got to remember it's about that IC chip. That IC chip is everything when, and the VRMs too, uh, are everything when it comes to pushing that TDP. So be careful, you know, mod and overclock at your own risk. But other than that, guys, I, I can't really think of anything else to say except for the fact that we are going to do Time Spy natively on the Steam Deck stock overclock and all across the board. Uh, we're going to be doing it in stock backplates, JSOX backplates, fully modded backplates, and I can't wait to do those testing. And one thing I noticed, Time Spy, it's so freaking slow. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.